Finding Good Apps for Education. After viewing this tutorial, you will have acquired strategies for using information in the App Store to help you identify quality education apps. We're going to talk about a few tips for finding quality apps for education. Even if you're used to downloading apps for a personal iPad, you're going to want to look at some different things when you are evaluating apps to possibly use with your students. First, let's go into the App Store. And I happen to be on the Featured page. And currently, the App Store is looking at all categories of apps. Since there are literally thousands of apps in the App Store, it's a good idea to narrow them down a bit before you start looking at them. I'm going to tap on More in the top navigation and then tap on Education. This gives me apps that are categorized as educational. Now that doesn't always mean just K-12. For example, here's a How to Cook Everything app. but it does narrow things down a bit and as I scroll down the page I can see that there are some suggested collections and I can drag toward the left to scroll through those. I can also continue scrolling down and see that there are preschool and kindergarten apps, elementary school apps, middle school and high school and even higher ed. So of course these are categorized by perhaps the app makers or the folks who run the app store. So you might find things in other levels that are suitable for your students. But this helps you get started. One thing you want to look at when you're looking at an app is is it free or not? We're going to focus on free apps today because we set up your iTunes accounts without a credit card if you'll recall during your initial training that you came to in person. Purchasing apps in education is different from purchasing them personally. We have to make sure we have a license of the app for every iPad we own. So currently the only way to purchase apps is to work through your campus which will provide a budget code to the technology department to purchase apps. Your educational technologist can assist you with this if you feel you need to purchase an app. Right now I'm looking at the lifelong learner section and I see an app called TED. I've heard of TED Talks so I'm wondering if this is associated with that. I'm going to tap the app and it flips open some information about the app. First of all I note that it is free so if I do choose to try it I don't have to pay any money. I'm going to scroll down a bit and look at some details. It tells me what's involved in the app and I want to watch for little more links and tap them so that I can read more information. I can look at what happened in the latest update and continue looking for information. Now one of the things I look at a lot when I'm looking at apps is the version history. I like to tap that and see how often the app is being updated. This tells me whether the developer is really invested in the app or not and whether I can expect it to continue to be improved. Now this isn't a deal breaker for me but I do like to look for apps that are in continual progression. Also if I continue scrolling down I see a few other links that I can investigate. One thing you would see down here if it was applicable is something called in-app purchases. We're going to look at another app in a second and I'm going to show you what that means. But that's not applicable to this app. So the next thing I want to look at are the reviews. What do people think about the app? After you tap the reviews area of the app information, note that you can look at ratings for just the current version or if you tap on it all versions. Sometimes that's helpful just to see how active people are in reviewing the app but I always like to look at the current version if I've never downloaded or used the app before. When you are looking at the reviews you can also sort them 
Here it's sorted by most helpful, but I can look at most recent, which I like to do, so that I can see what's happened in the latest release. Now there's always going to be folks that fuss about things, so what you want to look for is the overall, is it positive or negative. If you like the idea of this app, you might also want to look at related apps to get ideas for other things you might want to look at later. After looking at the reviews and the details, if it's an app that you think you might want to use, go ahead and download it simply by tapping free and then install. And remember, it might ask for your password, which I'm going to blip past in this video so that you can't see what mine is. While we're here and it's downloading, I'm going to show you one more little feature. Let's say you really liked this app and you'd like to recommend it to a fellow teacher. You can tap up here on the action icon in the top right and choose mail. And I could mail this now to a colleague of mine and then she can get a direct link to it in the App Store. So that's kind of a nice little feature if you want to show someone an app. You can even do that after you've downloaded the app by just finding it again in the App Store. I'm going to tap outside of this box to close it and I want to show you one more app really quick called Puppet Pals. I kind of cheated and I have it typed up there in the top right already. Uh, it's just an app I happen to know is used a lot in education. So since I already typed it when I tap the field I have results already so I'm gonna tap on Puppet Pals. Now what's interesting about Puppet Pals is there's one here on the left that says Puppet Pals HD Directors Pass and it costs $3.99. Puppet Pals HD to the right of that is free, but notice it has a little note on it that says offers in-app purchases. This is key to remember. I'm going to go ahead and tap on Puppet Pals and I won't show you all the detail sections again because I just did that on the TED app, but I am going to scroll down and have you notice that this has a section that says in-app purchases. I'm going to tap the little link that says show in-app purchases and take a look at some of the things that are going to cost me money if I decide to upgrade this app. Now in-app purchases are very difficult in education because we cannot purchase those through a purchase order through the business office technology department. So it's something to remember. What might happen is this. You may choose to use the free version of the app and the free version of this app is fairly functional. I just know that from experience. Later on, you may want more features. What would happen then is you would have to work with someone on your campus to get a budget code to purchase the Director's Pass version of the app since we can't do in-app purchases separately. Again, your educational technologist can help you with this process. So those are just a few things to consider, places to look in the App Store and in individual app information when you are thinking about an app to use for teaching or learning. This concludes our tutorial on finding good apps for education. If you are viewing this video as part of iPad Basic Training, Please continue to the next section as instructed in the online materials.